Hey, it's Angela with Parker's Permaculture. I'm standing by my woodshed, obviously, um, doing yard work today. It is early May. It's a Saturday. It's really sunny. I skipped roller derby today to work on yard projects. Um, I wanted to make a brief video talking about uh, splitting wood and the tools that I like to use. So I have a collection of axes. So here's by the way, this is all the cured wood left from last winter. I f we filled the entire woodshed, both bays last year, and I had every fire I could ever want all the time and kept the house roasting hot in the winter. And this is the wood that is left over. So it's mostly some cedar we got from friends, which I know has a low BTU and also um, can be pitchy, but it's great for starting fires. It lights like that, and you don't need hardly any, like, any kindling. Behind it is maple. Friends took out a maple tree. Actually, same friends who took out the cedars. Took out a maple tree, and um, there's maple from them. There's also cherry left. This is all cherry from two doors down where they had a giant cherry tree removed, and they didn't want to keep any of the wood. So my next-door neighbor and I split that. These are cured hazelnut prunings. I had tons and tons and tons of prunings. So if you're burning this cedar, it's not very hot. You need to get the wood stove up to temperature so you don't build up creosote. Adding a bunch of hardwood sticks ramps that temperature up. Um, kindling. Okay, so this is what's left. We burned both of these bays. We have a Yodel 602 wood stove that heats about 900 square feet, so it doesn't heat our whole house. But we almost never run the heater in the winter, at least last winter. Even when it was very cold, we rarely ran the heat and it was mostly to help my daughters upstairs. So we have a plan to cut a hole in the ceiling and put some vents up from where the wood stove is, some registers to go up to the upstairs to the girls' room and get push more heat up there, but that's gonna require quite, that's a big project, so haven't done it yet. Okay, so then this is upcoming wood for this winter. You can see that I'm behind this point. Last year I had a bay and a half full. Um, I've just been really busy. So most of this is an apple tree I got off Craigslist and a cherry tree I got off Craigslist and prunings from our yard and birch I got off Craigslist and um, some mystery wood. Um, the apple and the cherry burn pretty hot. The hazelnut prunings from our trees, from our coppice trees, burn real hot. Um, the um, birch doesn't burn as hot, so you, you go through it more quickly. Um, so I'm splitting some wood this morning. Our friends took out an apricot tree and gave us a bunch of wood from that. And apricot also burns pretty hot. It's very pretty orange wood and I kind of hate to, hate to have to burn it, but it's not really usable for woodworking. So, um, I mean it is, but I'm not gonna use it for that purpose, so I might as well make use of it. Um, so I wanted to talk about two tools that I really, really love. Briefly, okay, so if one, I always wear gloves because I get blisters, even if the handle of my uh, splitting tools are really well oiled. I'm gonna sit down on this stump here, move my water. Um, okay, so um, when I started splitting wood, when we got the wood stove, hey buddy, give me a second, I'm making a video, okay? I'll be there in about two minutes, three minutes maybe. Um, my dad gave me, this is my grandfather's splitting mall, um, Oregon splitting mall as you can see it has a plastic handle which is just brutal on your hands you will just be blister city if you don't wear gloves and also um it is just it's just really hard on the hands the reverb from the head down the handle it makes your hands hurt after a while um so i don't love that but it was free right um i've tried had to sharpen it many times despite having it being um a pretty good quality head that holds an edge for a while. I somehow chipped the top splitting wood, so I had to file that down. It's still a little bit, don't want to take it back too far, but I don't know how I chipped the edge of this. Um, it holds it, an edge pretty well. It has a nice wide head, so it splits difficult wood um, pretty easily. You can see the back of it. So the other thing, oh, I'll move my water here. The other thing I really like about this mall I really like a mall for the long handle. You can see how long this handle is. This is creosote sap from the um, from splitting cedar. You get that when you split cedar. It was all up and down the handle. It's very sappy. Whatever clothes you're wearing when you stack cedar, you will ruin them. So just be aware of that. Excuse me for one second here. My phone is dying and I want to plug it in. 
Um, get my battery pack going. Okay. So I really love this long handle. It gets you a really good swing. Um, I really like it. You can get a lot of force behind your swing and it's easy on the arms and the back and it gives a great shoulder workout. So anyway, uh, this small, I like the handle. I like the shape of the head. I don't love that the handle is plastic. This had a nice wooden handle. So this you can see here, this has split pretty soon. I will be thinking about replacing this with a hickory handle. Um, I've replaced axe heads before. It's a project that takes a few days and it's kind of a pain. I have to go over and use my dad's workshop because I don't have a workshop here. But um, when this crack gets much bigger, I'm going to replace this with a hickory handle. And then I think I will love this mall a lot more. Okay, so let me put that down. Recently I was gifted, so okay, I have a number of axes, forest axes and felling axes, not good for splitting wood, right? I actually don't like splitting with an axe, I like a maul, no matter what. But then I was recently gifted this magical, magical thing. Let's see if my camera will focus. This is a Grand Forest Brooks um, large splitting axe, so. Grand Forest Brook makes um, pretty much the premier artisanal handcrafted axes of any kind they're very very expensive this axe was so far out of my budget you know it's one of those things where like it's in your your dream list of of tools but you know you're never going to own it and then a friend had one sitting in her shed for years and never used it and and offered it to me and just it just such a gift I can't even begin to explain what a great gift this is this axe comes brutally sharp so most of the axes I've picked up have been like at the thrift store or um, rummage sales or things and they need a complete rehabbing of the head um, and even axes you buy in the store often don't have that great of an edge this had a really really sharp edge um, didn't have to sharpen it at all to start using it so this is not a, this is basically like a, a hybrid between a mall and a, and a regular um, axe so let me let me flip it so you can see how wide the head is so you get that mass in the back that really leverages your momentum and helps you split nicely. So things I love about this ax, shape of the head, how really nice quality the head is. You can see they're also stamped with the individual maker's name. Sorry, my hands are super dirty. I've been doing yard work. This guard, I love. Um, I had to replace the handle on my last ax because overstrike pits the wood on a hickory handle and over time you have to replace the handle it, it shreds right here if you have overstrike so this protects you from that so I really like this little guard the handle is hickory I'm gonna need to oil it because um, like I said it's sat in someone's shed I'm just working on testing it out the things I don't love about this axe oh it's weighted really nicely really sharp I don't have to um, it splits pretty nicely the handle is hickory, doesn't hurt your hands. You don't get reverb up the handle. Love the overstrike guard. This is my one thing, and I think this is just my stylistic preference. I have my gloves in here for scale. Um, I really like the way I swing with a longer handle. See that? I, I find that this swing is harder. I have a really messed up right shoulder. This is a little bit harder on my shoulder, the short swing because of the handle. I like the long swing of a mall handle. So that's my only complaint. And it's maybe I'm going to have to get used to it. And it again is my own preference. Uh, I think anybody else would have no problem with this handle and no problem with the swing. It's just that I like a longer handle. I'm also six feet tall and I have really long arms. And um, I think that also contributes to the fact that I really like that big swing and that big long handle. And this feels like I'm just choking up on it the whole time, but it's just because the handle is that much shorter, which is a normal, it's a normal axe handle length. So, but that hickory is so nice. That reverb doesn't, doesn't hurt your hands nearly as bad as a plastic handle. Don't get a plastic handle. I uh, also want to point out how straight the grain is. Let's see if I can get this to focus. Sorry for the jiggling. There we go. Look how nice and straight. They picked a really nice piece of hickory really nice fits really nice in your hand and there's also um sorry i'm shaking up. i don't want to get up on the bench here it comes with a little leather leather guard for the front the top you can see um it's really nice and snug 
Again, I'm going to want to oil this with some boiled linseed oil and continue to help swell this head so it doesn't get loose. Um, it's interesting to me that they only put one pin in. When I've reheaded an axe, I use two pins, and the axes I've had from the store have two pins. So it's interesting that it just has one. Um, anyway, so, you know, if you're in the market for a $180 axe to split your wood, and that doesn't feel like a luxury, you should get this axe. It's great, better than any of the other ones I've used before. If you like a mall, I think any American mall will do. I really like the head of an American mall. I like this little extra splitting here. Encourages it to open up the wood, especially like really, really hard, difficult wood. Um, I would encourage you to never, ever get a plastic handle. Get a hickory handle. If you find a, a mall head that you like, replace it with a hickory handle. Um, save yourself a ton of blisters and a ton of aching hands and aching forearms. So anyway, okay, well, I'm going to get back to yard work. I just wanted to cover those, those things. Those are the tools that I use. I also have some wedges in a sledge for when I'm splitting really old cured wood and it doesn't want to go. Um, use a little mechanical advantage with a wedge, but I find that um, I'm pretty strong. I'm pretty like I've split enough wood now that I don't have to use a wedge that often unless it's super, super, super naughty. Um, pretty much just use these two tools. So if you have any favorite splitting axes or malls or any brands you recommend or any tips you want to share with me in the comments, please feel free. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs up. Please uh, subscribe to my channel. Please let me know the things that you'd like to cover um, in our Zone 8B permaculture farmette in Portland, Oregon, where we have bees and ducks and chickens and wood stove and a fruit orchard and all those things. I'm happy to cover any topics. I have a native's garden, um, shade gardening. Oh, my girls are laying eggs. So, all right. Well, thanks very much and hope you have a good weekend.